Um, I would just mention to everyone very quickly before we start uh, properly with the session. Um, thank you very much to all that participated in our recent survey. Um, we were asking you which demo sessions you want us to run next um, and your answers were very helpful so basically based on these we have planned for the months ahead there will be two months break um, I think that's for June and July and we'll resume in September so now we we are thinking about the session still September so feel free to have a look at the link um, that is in the agenda and also in the chat and also please know that these notes are for you and feel free to add comments questions and especially if you don't want to voice add them for the recording like i mentioned before so i'll just hand over to patricia yeah and i'll basically just do the the regular reminder that this is a friendly space uh so be kind to uh, each other uh, and uh, and us, so friendly criticism, I guess, is, is uh, what you call it. If you feel there are like any issues in these sessions, you can um, get in touch with Magdalena and myself um, afterwards, uh, or um, uh, our colleague Thordis, uh, uh, if you if you um, comfortable to contact uh, a third person. Um, I think that's it. Then. Yeah, sorry, I have a dog and she just sees a kid outside. So if you hear barking, I do apologize. Um, so the goal of the call is to explain what a guidance is, if you haven't used it before, explain which different type of guidance you can create. And we'll also go through what this will look like for the users. Yeah, we do have a... Um you know, a regular agenda item where you could um, share your experience on using guidance um, so far, if there is something you want to raise. Um, I have a feeling that we're going to probably pick quite a few of these uh, up when we talk about um, uh, the the suggestions uh, and the, the feedback that has been um, locked so far that came through user groups or suggestions from, from clients. Um, so uh, unless someone wants to, to speak and really has something that they want to raise right now. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Hi, Should... guys. I'm not... ah, OK. I am still trying to, to learn the, the tool itself. So I was busy doing some customization on the tool, but then I struggled with the guidance. So I could not find a, a feature where I could add the, the, the organizational guidance. So I think this session would be useful to me because I need to learn how do we add that extra part on the tool. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Like it is, um... Yeah, I, I guess that that echoes that it is not the easiest thing to do if you don't know where to look for it. Um, so they are, um, um, but that's exactly what these um, these sessions are for. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we'll we'll pick this up uh, about a few suggestions how how um, this could be made easier uh, later. But uh, if you if you're happy to to do so, Magdalena, do you just want to? Go ahead, and um, I vote for Google being on on camera as well and helping out. Uh, like, pet content is still the best thing uh, of this pandemic. I have to say, especially as I don't have one myself, so I need to, you know, profit from other people's dogs. <laughs> yeah, so you know, she has like a little seat next to me where she sometimes likes to be, so her head might be popping. Um, but she's normally quite well behaved unless there is a cat in the front. So, okay, I hope you can see my screen now. Um, let me move things around before I start because it always does this funky thing. Um, so, okay, I went to dmponline.dcc.ac.uk. I'll just sign in. So I'm already signed in when we start. And here we go. Okay, so again, hello everyone. And thank you for joining um, the session on the guidance. Like I mentioned, in today's session, I'll explain what guidance is, 
different type of guidances you can create and we'll also demo what you, how you go in practice about creating the guidance and what this looks like for the users. First things first though, um, guidance can be only used if you have the admin privileges. So make sure you can see the extra drop down menu here and it shows the guidance here. If this is something you can't see, please drop us an email at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk um, and we'll ensure that you have the admin admin rights and use, use this. So there are a few ways how you actually can add guidance for the template. The first one is to create so-called theme guidance and the second one is to add question specific guidance. We'll cover both in today's session. I'll first explain what a theme guidance is, and then we'll also demo how to go about creating one. So let's start with the theme guidance. There are 14 themes that represent the most common topics addressed in data management plans. And I'm just showing you once we'll be going through the specific steps, this is just, you know, to introduce what a theme guidance is, but this is where you can find the different themes. Um, these themes work like tags, uh, which you can associate questions and guidance. So questions within a template can be tagged with one or more themes. And you as an administrator can then create guidance by theme to apply their advice over all template at once. This removes the need to update guidance each time a new version of a template is released. So again, if you will have question about this, um, feel free to ask. Um, but now what I will do, um, I'll just go step by step um, how to create a theme guidance. So there are three steps. First is to create a guidance group. Second is to create a guidance. And the third one is to ensure that we publish this. So we'll start with the first step to create a guidance group. You will need to, we are already here, but just to remind yourself, we will need to click on admin and click here on guidance. And this will bring you to this page. And here you will need to first create a guidance group. I already prepared these two, um, so it's a little bit faster for me to go through every step, but just in practicalities, I'll show you. This is what it will look like. This is where you will type the name of your guidance and, you know, you can decide whether it's published or whether this is optional subset. I'll first go into the first one. And we suggest you to, if you are creating wine guidance for your institution, just call this, I don't know, guidance for Sheffield University or Sheffield University. And that's just enough. If you are not creating sub guidance, for example, for law department or humanities department or schools or whatever you have at your institutions, this won't be a subset. Um, so I, I called my DMP online tutorials just because, you know, this is um, the institution I'm working under um, in order to do this demo and it's for the testing purposes. I will hit that it's not published yet. And like I said, this is not the subset and I hit save and I go back to my list and you can also create like a subset and again, you can only create this um, if you you need a subset. So again, like I mentioned, if you're creating something specific for department or schools or whatever this might be, and just ensure that it's easy for the users to understand um, whether this is a subset or not. There is a nice way to ensure, you know, that while you work with these guidance groups, um, you can clearly see whether it's been published or not. And based on that, this is going to be visible for your users or not. So in here, I now hit that it's unpublished. The low one is currently published. This is my main group, but in here, this says optional subsets. So the, the low one I have been creating here is my subset. And if I want to change anything, uh, you just go like usual through the actions. So you can edit your guidance name, for example, or whatever you need in here. You can publish the guidance if you're ready, but if you just decided you don't want this at all, you can also hit remove and that will just delete 
the guidance completely. Um, so once we created our guidance group list, you can then continue by creating the items that you want to appear within your guidance list. So you will hit here, create guidance, and you will just write your guidance text you wish to add. And depending on the theme you are associating this uh, guidance with, you will just hit whether this is in relation to budget or data collection and you will choose whether this belongs to the main group or subgroup if you're creating one and again you have the option to publish straight away but you can come back to this if you wish so i'll just show you um i pre prepare doesn't have as much text but just very quickly again I created one, just called it Guidance Your Own Budget, but this should really have like a proper text um, where you just explain any further information you acquire from your researchers. And I clicked here that this will be associated with the theme on budget. I selected that this will belong to the, to the main group and I will hit save. So I'll just go back to my guidance list now and I'll ensure now that everything is published. Um, so. I'll hit here, publish. And now, you know, all my main DMP online tutorials is published. Although I can see this one. I think this was under a different group I have deleted before. So sorry, I was, before we started the session, I was having quite a lot of guidance group lists created here before. So it might be that this one is associated with something different. So I'll actually just remove it. And um, so it's not too confusing. So we created the guidance group list. We created the specific guidance. This will probably take a little bit more time um, because you know you can, like I mentioned, create these around 14 different themes. But again, just for the testing purposes, I'm just showing you the steps to follow. Um, and now I, I want to just show you what it will look like for the users if you are creating uh, the guidance um, theme like this for them. So I'll say I have no funder and we'll just select the template. This is the right one tutorial template for demo session and guidance. So I click here, create plan. And this is where the researchers will be able to select the guidance that will be appearing next to the questions. Now I'll show you this. So Patricia will be also mentioning, and we can go back to this. This is one of the requests which we receive very often. The digital curation center guidance tends to appear by default in many institution ask us whether we could just untick this, but we, we can go back through this. But automatically, because I'm um, affiliated with my institution, I can see uh, the, the guidance here. And I can decide whether actually I want to see it or not, but if the institution is providing this to me, then why not? And I go into writing a plan and I open my question. And this is where the guidance will appear. You can also see the DCC guidance if you wish. Um, but this is where your institutional guidance will appear. So what we will do now, we'll explain how to go around. This was how we create the theme guidance, but there is the other way um, and it's to add the question specific guidance. You can create this um, within your institutional template or you can also customize the founder template. So like I mentioned, guidance can be provided for a specific question. If you create your own template, you can add the guidance to accompany each question basically as you go around creating your template. So in practice, this is what it looks like. So this is my, I don't know, question number one. I go into here, edit, and you can just directly type the guidance here if you wish. Also, when you are just creating it directly in your template, you really don't need to take any any theme here. Um, that's not necessary. Um, if you want to customize a founder template, oops, you will just go into customizable templates. And again, you can just select the template where you wish to add something specific. And we'll hit here. Um, for example, I 
I think I already added this one. Attic test preview. And we can we can add the guidance here or in, into the questions they already provided. So for example, the data summary, um, that's their question. And this is where you can just, you know, type your guidance straight away, save, and don't forget to publish as well. Um, this can be useful, for example, um, if there is a guidance that will be only relevant in one context. So for example, a response to questions around local policies. Um, so again, this is this is just another way you can be um, creating the guidance. I personally uh, would suggest to use the theme guidance just because it makes your life much easier and you don't need to go manually through the founder templates one by one. But as long as you have created your own guidance, that will always appear next to the founder templates and removes the need to go through the template on its own. I also added this into the notes and I, I hope you can see now when I swapped my window. What oh, this is not very good resolution, so I apologize. But if a founder um, updates their template, this is what it would look like. And what you can just do, you will just hit transfer customizations and then all the all the guidance you have created before will be transferred. So this is all for me and about how to create a guidance. Um, but we'll just continue with the session. Uh, Patricia will just tell you some features and other functionalities we were thinking um, how to improve this. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to either unmute yourself or add your questions um, into the document. Can't see any immediate comments, so um, I'll just take it from here. So basically, um, Um, the the suggestions that came from uh, from you in the community um, are basically quite a few about are about like easier ways to add and update um, guidance and um, improve improve the display because um, we're all aware that like for the for the users this is not the most straightforward thing to um, to get the right guidance and it, it uh, clutters the, um, um, the page uh, a little bit, especially if you want to, to pick quite a few of them, it gets uh, rather confusing. So um, we are aware of that. So one of the suggestions um, Magdalena already mentioned is to, you know, have the DCC guidance uh, switched off by default or um, select which one you would like your users to um, have by um, by default, if that's your, um, your institutional one or uh, any other good guidance that um, is in the, in the system. Same with like uh, templates there. Um, there is quite a lot in there. And um, I think as part of the work that we, um, that we plan to do around the plan creation side, um, there is there should be options to customize what you push at the stage, which is like highlighting um, specific templates and then also the guidance that goes um, along with with that. So um, yeah, we, we have the idea that uh, you as administrators could filter at this stage what do you want um, your users to see in the in the drop down menu. Um, then uh, one of the things that uh, also comes up quite regularly is um, like refining guidance topics. Um, Magdalena has mentioned that it is the uh, easiest way to get 
your guidance in across all the templates and um, especially as long as we don't have an option to copy your customizations across templates in an easy way. Um, using theme guidance is basically the, the um, yeah, resource efficient way to get uh, uh, into the system what you want to get into the system. Um, but then, you know, you have like, if you tag your questions accordingly, if you add a lot of questions um, in that like are under a specific theme, you get things like this where like ethic and, and privacy just pops up all over the place. And it's not very, you know, you get the same guidance for various questions and actually you want it to be more granular for your users. Um, so uh, basically the, the idea is there to uh, to potentially allow you to do like uh, local extensions on theme guidance um, at a few themes in yourself where you can be more granular um, or maybe find just like a, a more elegant solution or address that via like actually being able to copy things across templates. Um, but we are aware that, you know, this we, we tried to create like broad topics or broad themes um, and that made it cleaner back at the time. But now that like uh, actually we see how people are, are working with the customizations, it might not be granular enough. So um, that is uh, something that we're, we're aware of that could be improved. Um, Another point is that, you know, guidance is one of the things that isn't easily downloadable. So um, there's basically no, well, there's no way in the interface for you to extract all the guidance you have in, in the system for, for example, doing reviews. Um, you can do it via the API. So the full text API gives you the guidance, um, but then again, um, you can only extract it, you can't actively push uh, modifications back in. So I guess that's also potentially an option to um, make that part of the API uh, um, uh, allow write access. So you could potentially update guidance uh, via the API and you don't have to go through, through the interface all the time. So basically um, there's like, yeah, there's, some things that work well in the API and not well in the interface and then the other way around. And I guess ideally um, we get the two aligned. So it's both easy to um, download guidance from the inf interface and the API, but also um, edit in, in both places. Um, and then there's um, the, the formatting of guidance when, when it is downloaded. So that's um, like question specific guidance when you actually um, hit the download button on the um, on the uh, in the system so that's I was I was actually checking this this morning and I'm not sure whether there is some back or the it changed over time but the guidance actually doesn't appear. Um, it, I think it still does, I think, in uh, some places here. So you have the guidance here. So it pulls out if you're doing, uh, if you're at least uh, exporting the, the empty template. Um, so then it's bundled bundled within, but it is, yeah, it is not super clear. And it's also slightly inconsistent where it shows up when you download things. So uh, again, that's a kind of a cleaner job for us uh, and uh, be a bit more consistent um, across the board. So that's kind of the bits that we we have on our to-do list. Uh, we, we are aware that um, I think I mentioned that that the whole editing of a um, 
data management plan page might need some bigger rework to make sure that um, the guidance isn't confusing too overwhelming. So um, we talked to designers and we do have some ideas. It's um, again, having the time to do a major rework of what is basically the core functionality of DMP online. <laughs> um, um, so that needs like to be planned carefully. Um, yeah, that's kind of the things that we have on the list. Uh, none of this has timelines uh, at the moment because we're like basically still in the uh, situation where we're like short staffed and just working through the, the really urgent things and like new features and improvements are uh, at the moment a bit further further down the line for us when we have more capacity. Um, yeah, is there anything that um, you have as questions or additional features that you would like to see? Um, if so, feel free to pop that in the document or the chat or unmute yourself. Uh, I, I have a question just related to what Magdalena was talking about when the funder templates are updated and needing to transfer the customizations. Is there a way to alert us when funder templates have been updated? Because it's not always obvious to go in and, you know, update and do that transferring of the customization. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. And I'm not sure we might actually raise a ticket. I don't know how big of a work it would be, um, but it might be raised worth the races on the roadmap there unfortunately like you said isn't currently an obvious way um when you know when there is an updated template and it's very often done by us we we tend to advertise this on the social media um and in the newsletter but you know if there is a template for example nwo that's a dutch funder and they're using the dmp online they are subscribed if they update we don't know so it might be um, an improvement in the functionality if the founder template is updated, maybe to have like a notification. But I think that would be like a ticket to be actually raised for the roadmap. And I think be quite helpful um, because exactly, like you said, there isn't an obvious even manually need to go and see. And um, so um, it's a good point. And I'll, I'll actually, after the session, I'll try to raise at least like a very broad ticket um, which we can then discuss more in detail but at least we will have like a placeholder you know for the future like how, how to go about this i'm not a software developer myself so i don't know how difficult this would be but um after some further conversations with the uh, cdl colleagues and as well as our colleagues and our team and uh, we'll be able to build the specs but thank you for the suggestion you're absolutely right um it would be good improvement have a feeling I might have seen that ticket already so I, I don't but then like uh, I might get confused but because it is like so, you know uh, it is a straightforward thing kind of um, or it, it should be again I guess it's then um, figuring out which subset of templates you want uh, to notify people on and whom you want to notify because not everyone will be interested in every template. And I think that's probably where we uh, need to do the thinking uh, with our developers and potentially also come back to you as, uh, as a group to make sure we actually um, implement something that notifies you and all the things you want to be notified on without, you know, swamping your notifications for um uh everything that gets gets updated um but yeah if we if we do it centrally we we can notify you we could pro pro probably also put a notification on the system in addition to social media but um uh, again that's kind of well yeah fairly um um not again not not always of interest to to all users i think it's that's one of the things that we need to refine now that we have a, a wider international uh, user base that uh, has like 
different preferences for um, funders and templates. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether there are any any more questions or suggestions. I don't see anything. No. Small group today. It is a small Not group. Bad, that it's absolutely fine. Like if you if you can think of any or, um, you know, again, if you go after the session and share the notes with your colleagues. They might have further suggestions, so always feel free to update the document. I tend to have a look through, um, and also like from last session, I have added further tickets that were requested after we were having the demo session on the usage statistics. So always feel free, the document is a reference for you. Um, so if there was anything in the past uh, you weren't sure about, I always add the further answers. Um, either myself or with my colleagues, so uh, feel free to have a look through the document. There are no further questions, and um, I think we can just go, Patricia, slowly to closing. So, like I mentioned, feel free to invite others, share the recording and notes, um, and feel free to share with the community. Um, and do keep up to date with the MP online. Um, if you're not subscribed to our Twitter and LinkedIn, do so. We are having a monthly newsletter as well, and we have a community mailing list if you're interested in the most recent news. We put together also a YouTube playlist for these demo sessions. So if you missed last month, feel free again to have a look through. And the next demo session will be in May, because in April we are running RDA and IDCC conference. So we hope to see some of you there. Um, and it will be on Google Analytics. I must say, um, I haven't used it before, but I'm quite excited to learn a little bit more about it. Um, we, with the most recent release, we updated um, the version for you to see also some analytics about how is the MP online used from a slightly different perspective. So it might be interesting to join the session. And I hope you enjoy today and have, really, have a lovely rest of today. Many thanks to Patricia as always uh, for helping me to run the session, for Marta to join, for joining as well. And I wish you a lovely rest of today.